Baseball.com. We'll have the play you thought should be Sunday's number one web gem on the next baseball tonight. We come your way after Monday night baseball, about 10 o'clock or so Eastern time, Monday on ESPN. For Buck Showalter, Buster Olney, and Nomar Garcia Parra, I'm Steve Berthium. Thanks for watching baseball tonight. A busy Sunday. A Rod still on 599. Dan Heron now heads to Anaheim. Cubs and Cardinals on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Dan Schulman, Bobby Valentine, and Oral Hershiser have the call. It's ESPN's Sunday Night Baseball from Wrigley Field. And Steve, always a little bit of extra buzz here on the north side of Chicago when their most heated rivals, the St. Louis Cardinals, come to town. And the Cubs are looking for a sweep over Albert Pujols and the Cardinals here as they try to wrap up the series tonight at Wrigley Field. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is presented by Taco Bell. Beautiful night here to wrap up this series between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago Cubs. All the heat is gone. All the humidity is gone. For the Cardinals, all the winning is gone so far this weekend. The Cubs have won the first two games of this series Friday afternoon. The Cubs, who have really started to hit lately, hit three home runs. Tyler Colvin leads off the game with one. Giovanni Soto homers, Alfonso Soriano homers, Randy Wells and Sean Marshall combine to shut out St. Louis. Yesterday, more power from the Cubs. Again in the first inning, Tyler Colvin homers. Later on, they would add another one. Starlin Castro with a home run. Carlos Marmol comes on and retires. Matt Holliday on a soft liner to end the game as the Cubs hang on and win by a score of 6-5. to five. If you're a Cubs fan, let me rephrase that. If you're an optimistic Cubs fan, you're still thinking the dream is possible. There are nine back of the Cardinals. If they can sweep tonight, they'll gain another game. they got nine more left with the Cardinals later on this season. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman, Oral Hershiser, Bobby Valentine with you here in Chicago. John Miller being honored in Cooperstown today. And Hall of Famer Joe Morgan is there as well. If you're the Cardinals, you're looking to salvage something out of the series. You want one of your best on the mound, and they've got it tonight in Chris Carpenter. Yeah, one of the best starting staffs around. A trio of great, but the ace on top, the 35-year-old veteran, Cy Young Award winner, two-time comeback player of the year. Goes through some bumps in the road in the last few starts, but has gotten back on track since making the all-star team at the all-star break didn't have to throw found his release point and his side works is not overstriding anymore is on top of his fastball making it sink and hitting his target again 2-0 in his last two starts the Phillies and Dodgers saw him for eight innings each only one run in each game so he's on track he needs to get these Cardinals back on track he will face a hot hitting team as we mentioned the Cubs are really coming on right now and some of the veteran guys are doing their job but Bobby it's really the two rookies at the top of the order who have really given them the spark oh, exactly Dan we have Tyler Colvin playing right field leading all National League rookies in home runs with 15 we have Starling Castro at shortstop who's only 20 years old yet he's second to Buster Posey in batting average with a 308 average here in the National League. These are two guys that Lou Pinella, even though he said he's going to retire <laughs> who has no quit in him says they're going to get him back in this pennant hunt and have a pennant race here in Chicago before it's all over. About a week ago where Lou Pinella moved Colvin and Castro to the top of the order since then the Cubs have averaged more than seven runs per game. Should it be a fun one tonight. We mentioned Chris Carpenter for the Cardinals a great competitor in Ryan Dempster for the Cubs as he looks for win number nine. One of the great rivalries in baseball continues tonight. Albert Pujols hit a couple of home runs off Ryan Dempster in a game here at the end of May. He'll take his hacks at the right-hander again at Wrigley tonight. This place is great. How many cute guys here? Mm hmm Do you smell... Bacon? Oh, yeah. It's a bacon club chalupa. <laughs> yeah, guys love bacon. <laughs> like that's really gonna work. Come on. Hi. <laughs> hey. How's it going? Hi. What is that you're wearing? It's... It's, it's intoxicating. <laughs> Taco Bell's Bacon Club Chalupa is back. Bacon lovers rejoice. <sighs> smells good. Getting a bartender's attention is an art form, where boldness is rewarded and the meat go thirsty. 
The waving of cash is considered unimaginative. There's the Vegas hit me, the charade technique, the prairie dog, the periscope, the third base coach. Some resorts are phoning the bar, which has been known to backfire. But whatever your technique, tip well and enjoy the beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, clean finish. It's what we do. Budweiser. These hands aren't just the takers of pictures or the creators of videos. They're the makers of art. So go ahead, make art. Pro quality, point and shoot simplicity, HD video, all in one. The Olympus Pen. I love all the gadgets. Check out the backup cam. Show me the Carfax. Can you show me the Carfax? Sunglass holder, hole. Before you buy a used car, get a Carfax report. It's free at thousands of reputable dealers. Just say, show me the Carfax. When baseball's biggest stars come out, Way back and it is gone. they shine brightest wow. on MLB Network. With over 100 live games this season. What a catch! And live look-ins to all the games on MLB Tonight. And there it goes! MLB Network. The sky is the limit. Find your channel number at MLBNetwork.com. This is what I use every day. It's dependable. It's very economical. I believe as long as I take care of her, she'll take care of me. And I trust my Toyota. While the reliability of a Toyota may last, the amazing deals and great selection won't during Toyota's National Clearance Event. And now lease a 2010 Corolla with zero down and zero drive off for just $199 a month. And ask your Toyota sales associate about the college grad rebate program going on now. Toyota, reliability to move you forward. Is there really a beautiful long way? You know there is. And the only way to get there is on a simplicity. The way to a beautiful lawn runs through your neighborhood simplicity dealer. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is presented by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. And in part by the powerfully simple pin camera. And Budweiser, with full flavor and a crisp, clean finish, it's what we do. Welcome back to Wrigley Field. What a night. Not a cloud in the sky this evening right now. It was 100 degrees here on Friday. It's out of the 70s right now. The storms blew through. The humidity is gone. It's absolutely gorgeous. As the Cubs and Cardinals wrap up this series tonight, here on Sunday Night Baseball. You can watch this game and over 800 other live games on your mobile phone with ESPN Mobile TV. Text TV to 4 ESPN. That's TV to 43776. The Cubs in their home whites take the field tonight here at Wrigley. We'll have some some shadows in play for the first couple of innings until we lose the remaining sunlight. Tony La Russa's St. Louis Cardinals are in a battle for top spot of the National League Central. Cincinnati lost today, so the Cardinals and Reds are in a dead heat atop the National League Central right now. Let's check out the starting lineup for the Cardinals, presented by Taco Bell. St. Louis has a team middle of the pack of the National League and run score. Leading off at third base, Felipe Lopez. Ryan Ludwig just off the DL, batting second and playing right. The incomparable Albert Pujols at first base batting third. A very hot hitter in Matt Holliday is in left field batting fourth. A very hot rookie John Jay in center field batting fifth. Skip Schumacher the second baseman will bat sixth. All star Yadier Molina will catch it about seventh. The pitcher again in the eighth spot as he often is for Tony La Russa. Chris Carpenter the pitcher tonight in batting ninth the shortstop. Brendan Ryan Bobby it's a compliment to Albert Pujols that you can be hitting 300 with almost 70 RBIs right now but by his standards he's kind of having a bit of a rough time right now and talking to Jose Okendo before the game third base coach for the Cardinals he says Albert hasn't been Albert all year long he's still searching he took his batting practice with the team and then went took extra batting practice with Jose in the tunnel he's searching and when he finds it he'll feel it and it might spell trouble and good 
trouble for the rest of the National League. <laughs> good times for the Cardinals. Well, good times for Albert Pujols. Or the last time he faced Ryan Dempster, hit a couple of home runs off him. But Dempster is one of the quality starting pitchers in the National League. He is a workhorse. He throws the second most pitches per start in the National League. He's up around 109 pitches and pretty efficient with those. A strikeout pitcher that allows him not to go deep in the game because of the pitch count. But Ryan Dempster has had some tough luck against the Cardinals. The Cubs have not scored any runs for him in the last three times he's pitched against them. A packed house as always here at a Wrigley Field. The Cardinals have lost three in a row after they had a big winning streak. The Cubs were playing poorly, but now they've won the first two of this series. And we are underway with a fastball in there for a called strike to Cardinal third baseman Felipe Lopez. A switch hitter batting for the left side, hitting 269 on the season. David Freeze is on the DL, so Lopez, who can play all over the infield, playing at third base tonight. Brendan Ryan is the shortstop. Skip Schumacher at second. Sometimes a bit of a revolving door through those three spots for Tony Larusa for a variety of reasons. As Dempster jumps out in front, one and two. Probably the hardest manager in a Major League Baseball to predict his lineup going into the game. Some guys you kind of know how they're going to how they're going to put him there. But with Tony Larusa, will the pitcher bat eighth or ninth? Who will be at second, third, and short? Guys like Ludwig and Holiday, will they be ahead of Pujols, behind Pujols? You never know what you're going to get. And he's been hard pressed for a lineup this year because his middle of the infield hasn't hit at all. And Freeze not only hurting his ankle, but then dropping a weight on his foot. Yeah. And now even longer because of that. A nice play by Derek Lee, and Lopez is retired. A look at the Cub defense right now, one of the weaker. Defensive groups in the National League. They've committed 76 errors on the season. Left to right in the outfield, Alfonso Soriano, Marlon Bird, the All Star, and Tyler Colvin, the rookie in right. Left side of the infield, Aramis Ramirez and 20 year old Starlin Castro, an exciting young talent. Right side of the infield, Ryan Terrio and Derek Lee, Giovanni Soto behind the plate. Here's Ryan Ludwig now, the right fielder, a guy the Cardinals just got back yesterday. Would have been on the DL with a calf injury and missed almost a month. An all star two years ago and another potent bat to insert into that Cardinal lineup. Went one for three, drew a walk, scored a couple of runs yesterday in the Cardinal loss. And he's still trying to get his timing back. He only had nine at bats down in Memphis on rehab, but getting a good look in this two hole. A lot of managers talk about that's a place where you can get guys started right before the bulk of the order comes up. And those hitters counts, you're guaranteed to get a little bit more of the fat of the plate from the pitcher. And there were days earlier this season when Matt Holliday was struggling. Tony LaRusso put him in the two spot. He got hot, and then he moved him back down to cleanup. And he has stayed hot. Just missed, says Bob Davidson, the home plate umpire. Little up, little out. K Zone has got it right. And so does Bob Davidson. Chopper over Dempster. Tough play, no play. Be an infield hit for Ludwig. One of the harder plays for a pitcher because your instinct is is to stay still and jump but what you really need to do is almost back up it's hit long and he tries to but he just goes with the short stop he steps if you try to go away from and run away from a ball going towards it and down a hill boy it's really hard a good try up the middle but it's do or die it's do or die and there's a lot of debris on the backside of that mound <laughs> with the rosin right. and the cleat cleaner and I think Ryan was cognizant of that when he jumped and was very ginger coming down his land. Now he's got to forget about it and set his sights on Albert Pujols. Albert hit a couple of home runs off Dempster as we mentioned back on the 30th of May. On the season Pujols is hitting 301 tied for fifth in the National League in home runs with 22. Third in the league in RBIs with 69, but since the All Star break, by his standards, quiet and does not have a hit yet in this series. He is 0 for 6 with a couple of walks. You see, Dan, there, he has his front foot 
just a slightly open because he hasn't been handling that inside pitch lately and I'm sure that's what he and Jose were working on before the game just trying to clear that hip a little more so as Albert says he can get his hands to work but when his body is proper and efficient then his hands are working here comes the inside pitch fastball inside of the belt two and one one of the great things about Albert throughout his career is when he gets that inside fastball even when it's been off the plate he's quick enough to hit it and quick enough and mechanically sound enough to keep it fair. And so people want to pitch him there but the great thing about Albert Pools that he can hit for power and average is that his out pitch is still something that he can handle. Runner at first one out two one breaking ball in the dirt ball three. He's really holding himself to a very high standard to change his stance, believe it or not, to open up like that just because, well, I'm only hitting 300. As we talk about so often, Earl, it's about the feel. And he just doesn't have the right feel. The numbers are coming. Everything looks good, but he doesn't feel good. Searching. Lodewick draws a throw. And the Cardinals, even with, and, and a lot of teams have had this, but even with some of their players underperforming at times, they've had their fair share of injuries. Two of their starting pitchers have been on the DL a long time. They're still in the hunt. They're still tied for the lead in the National League Central. Seems like they're always up there year after year. And there's ball four inside the pool holes. So first and second with one out. And let's go back to what Bobby was talking about a short while ago. This is before the game. Albert Pujols taking BP. And you can see a, a little frustration on his face. Things are just not coming together like he's used to. So there's the extra BP going out with Jose Akendo. Exactly. Searching. Maybe I left it here last time I was in town. <laughs> I'll go find it. Well, it's almost as if you're the next team on the Cardinal schedule. You're you're worried. You're saying, uh oh. It, When's it going to happen? That's right. <laughs> Jose Akendo, the longtime third base coach. Here's Matt Holliday and he takes just low ball one a double clutch from Giovanni Soto the catcher expected to hear a strike call didn't get it. And as Pujols is struggling Holliday is on a tear on a 10 game hitting streak right now. He's got 18 homers he's got 25 doubles. Deep in the hole Castro short hop for the out at second and then a wild throw. Does not end up doing any damage. It'll be runners on the corners with two down after the fielder's choice. Ill advised throw there. Castro's in left field. He makes a great play to get the forced out at second. What we have to be doing is looking to see if, in fact, Ludwig is taking a turn around third. Here's Castro. He has two feet in the outfield grass, plants his right foot, makes a great throw, one hop pick up at second but now you look to third base to see if in fact Ludwig's taking too big of a turn and try to pick him because there's no chance at first luckily no runs on the board in the old days there would be you didn't have the the uh, the fences in front of the dugouts like everybody has now that would have been a run good range by Castro good pick by Terrio at second just ill advised throw now John Jay with the runners at first and third two down and the rookie center fielder has been a real find for the Cardinals in recent weeks. He is hitting 386 in limited at bats with power. Colby Rasmus has a bit of a hamstring problem and he's been struggling, so Jay is getting more playing time. There goes Holiday towards second. They got him caught now. Ludwig inching down the line. Here he comes. The throw to the plate, and they got him. What a fabulous play by Castro. Two good plays in the inning by the young shortstop Starlin Castro. The Cubs with some good defense on the infield and the Cardinals don't score. So why are over a thousand people a day switching to Chevrolet? Room for eight all sorts of space behind the third row. They just thought of everything. It just feels like a really solid car. That should come in handy. It's the Chevrolet Summer Event, and anyone can get to traverse they want. Uh-uh. This one's mine. Get 0% APR for 60 months on the 2010 Traverse with an average finance savings of around 5700 The switch begins at ChevyDealer.com. My name is Rich, and this is my Sitco. 
Rich's family has been in this business for generations. In fact, Sitco's roots in communities like Milford go back 100 years. Day after day, through all those years, local families and businesses have relied on Rich's Sitco for the things they need. Because neighbors know they can depend on one another. Your locally owned Sitco, there at every turn. The financial headlines can be unsettling. But what if there were a different story of one financial company that grew stronger through the crisis? When some lost their way, this company led the way by protecting clients and turning uncertainty into confidence. What if that story were true? It is. No score going to the bottom of the first. An eventful top half of the inning, but the Cardinals leave a man on. Lou Pinella announcing earlier this week he's going to retire as manager at the end of the season. One of the winningest managers in the top 20 in wins in Major League history. Let's check out Lou's starting lineup presented by Taco Bell, a lineup that's really been hitting the ball lately. Nobody more so than rookie outfielder Tyler Colvin, with the possible exception of his fellow rookie, shortstop Starlin Castro, who's got five hits already in this series, Derek Lee. Not a great season, but his bat has started to come to life. Aramis Ramirez has been on a tear as well. All-star Marlon Bird is in center field, batting fifth. Alfonso Soriano with left field, hitting sixth. Giovanni Soto is heating up. The catcher is batting seventh. Ryan Terrio, the second baseman, batting eighth, and the batting ninth, the starting pitcher tonight, Ryan Dempster. It will not be easy for the Cubs, though, tonight, Oral, because 35-year-old Chris Carpenter, I guess the co-ace, of the St. Louis staff along with Adam Wainwright maybe the best one two combo in baseball. Yeah they're fantastic and Chris Carpenter is back on the bump back on a roll now his sinking fastball is outstanding. He was over striding a little bit a few starts ago but now that strides a little shorter the arm angles better and crisper movement and location last two starts very very well. Got to clean off the bases after half an inning. A lot of action out there in the top of the first. Actually, I think it was a little damp and slippery, so yeah. they tried to dry these bases off. They're doing third base now also, so there's no injury as we play this game. So while we wait for Tyler Colden to come up, the rookie outfielder has had one heck of a series in his first at bat in each of the last two games. He's gone deep. This is off Jeff Supon on Friday afternoon, leading off at the bottom of the first. And then he did the very same thing again yesterday off Blake Hawksworth. 15 home runs for Colvin in 216 at bats and he has certainly put himself into the rookie of the year conversation in the National League. We had a chance to visit with him in the, the Cubs clubhouse before the game and he has never been a leadoff hitter before until now and Bobby you don't think he's going to be a leadoff hitter for long. Well he said once at Clemson he did and, and lately he's been getting deeper counts but I told him you know a leadoff hitter is just a hitter and you don't have to put any kind of added pressure on yourself thinking you have to be this little guy who can steal bases or take a million pitches what you need to do get, is to give your team good at bats see the ball hit the ball and that's what he's doing now I think he has a chance to be the third place hitter in the major leagues before it's all over. And there's Starlin Castro, who could eventually develop into a leadoff hitter, but Lou Pinella feels that he's got room to grow and get stronger and that his power could come. It's sharply into center field, a base hit for the red hot Colvin. Well, here he was. He wasn't thinking about taking a lot of pitches. He was thinking about having a good bat at bat, and he takes a couple pitches and then gets one on the outside corner in the K zone and has a perfect swing. He has perfect balance, hands over the ball, line drive up the middle. Let's play baseball. Don't be surprised if Luke does something in the lines of a hit and run or a button run because he knows the wind is blowing in slightly today. He's not going to rely on that home run ball. First time in a number of days that the wind has been blowing in here at Wrigley. A cooler night, a better night for the pitchers. Here's Starlin Castro hitting a 308. The combo of Colvin and Castro hitting almost 400 over the last week since they have been moved up to the top two spots in the lineup. And when Castro was called up to the big leagues earlier this year, 
He became the shortstop. Ryan Terrio, the shortstop, went to second. Mike Fontenot, the second baseman, went to the bench. And the Cubs have benefited. They're a little more athletic now. Castro is doing a great job. And all of a sudden, the Cubs look like they have a dangerous, deep lineup with a number of hitters coming out of long slumps. You definitely want to have versatility in your lineup. And Rudy Jaramillo, speaking with him before the game, felt that they were built on too much of a fly ball hitting team, using Wrigley Field and the wind blowing out. But half of the time, it blows in. There's Rudy sitting in the dugout, doing a great job working every day with these hitters. He wishes he had a cage a little closer to the bench <laughs> so he could get a little more work in with his players. The, the cage is all the way out in right field. Part of the charm of a 100 year old stadium, or almost a 100 year old stadium. Oral, when you pitched here, how long after you walked into the park did you look to the flags to see which way the wind was blowing? I didn't even get in the park. It got off the team bus <laughs> and you looked at it. Fortunately, the bus parked in a place where you could see the flags. And if they were blowing out, you came down with uh, with the flu? No, no, you didn't get Wrigley elbow or anything <laughs> like that. Any of those ailments that are out there. <laughs> Runner at first, nobody out of one and one. Carpenter on the mound. And he misses outside. Ball two to Castro. Well, it's the action pitch. If Lou is going to do anything, you'll see it happen right here. And Castro's been a fabulous fastball hitter the entire time he's been up. You know, he's played all but one game of the 70 games that he's been in a Cub uniform. And Rudy Armio says he's learning to let the ball come to him and hit the breaking ball also. Now, now Chris Carpenter is a big guy. But he's not as big as his shadow makes him appear with the front with the sun setting off to the left. His shadow on the mound is reaching out almost to where Colvin is taking his lead. So you want to drag a butt down third right or have that throw come right out of that little sun to first exactly. base. Nothing. Carpenter falling behind and this is not typical Chris Carpenter. He's usually got very good command. And boy when he gets ahead of a hitter. He's tough. Batters are hitting only 138 after Carpenter gets ahead of them, but he's fallen to behind Castro. Waiting on deck, Derek Lee. He's on a hitting streak. The hot Aramis Ramirez behind Lee. Runner is going. Pitch taken for a strike. Throw down. The tag, and they got him. What a play by Ryan, the shortstop. The throw is on the third base side, and Colvin stopped as he went to slide. He like stuck in the mud. It wasn't an aggressive hard slide. Otherwise, he would have been safe because the throw was on the third base side of the bag. One of my pet peeves is that stand up slide because to actually stand up, you don't get to the bag. You actually pop up before you get there. Great throw right there. He did. He did slide a little early. So we've had the Cubs lose a man on the base pass in the bottom of the first. Ryan Ludwig technically caught stealing home to end the top of the first when Matt Holiday got hung up in a rundown between first and second and Ludwig broke for home. So some early opportunities for both teams and they've come up empty so far. Chopper foul and Castro continues to battle. I'm sure what's happening there with a 3-1 count. Colvin's going, figures that Castro's going to hit a fastball if in fact he gets one. He slowed down when he looked in thinking it was ball four. Then he went into his slide. You see that pop up slide as you come up you have to be slowing down with your back leg and getting your front leg ready to pop up so it uh, you're right Bobby it's not a hard slide. No. Backhanded by Ryan throw on the money to get Castro two down. Now look at the defense behind Carpenter tonight for the St. Louis Cardinals left to right in the outfield about Holiday John Jay and Ryan Ludwig as mentioned just back off of the illness four weeks with a calf injury. Felipe Lopez and Brendan Ryan on the left side of the infield Skip Schumacher and Albert Pujols on the right side of the infield and Yadier Molina generally acknowledged as the, the best defensive catcher in the game catching Chris Carpenter. I always like to watch guys when they go back into the bench after a possible miss sign. You know, you know you're in a 3 1 count, but it could have been a run and hit when you hit if it's a strike. Yeah, I doubt that there was a sign, right, Earl? Right. But uh, he's just saying, hey, you get that strike. I want you to put it in play. I'm looking in. Yep. And they're discussing it. I love that they're discussing it. Yeah. As you go for you go to get a good solid mm. jump you're running on a three run pitch if it's a strike you should really protect your runner just like if it was a running sign. And Terrio's given some good advice to the young Castro there in the dugout. 
But how things changed. The, the Cubs had a runner at first, nobody out, and a three and one count on Castro. Now two outs, nobody on, and Carpenter is out in front of Derek Lee. One ball, two strikes. Lee hitting 252 with 11 home runs. And he misses low with a fastball, does Carpenter. Two balls and two strikes. The thinking on that play, if I can, Dan, real quickly, is when it's three and one, you tell your hitter, get a pitch that you want in your spot. A lot of times the hitter thinks, well, if he gets a strike, he's going to swing at it. That's not the case. The pitcher makes a great pitch. Take it. He did, and he got thrown out at second. I'll tell you, as a starting pitcher, it's a breath of fresh air. It can turn a whole outing around because something like that, if the, the first inning starts to spin out of control, maybe you're feeling your way through the game so far, getting used to the, the Wrigley perspective out there, and then all of a sudden you get two outs, nobody on, you feel a lot better. 2 2 curveball. Lee sends it to left field right at Holiday, and the inning is over. No runs hit, nobody left at the end of one, no score here at Wrigley. It doesn't take much. An everyday moment can turn romantic at a moment's notice. And when it does, men with erectile dysfunction can be more confident in their ability to be ready with Cialis. With two clinically proven dosing options, you can choose the moment that's right for you and your partner. 36-hour Cialis and Cialis for daily use. Cialis for daily use is a low-dose tablet you take every day so you can be ready anytime the moment's right, day or night. Tell your doctor about your medical condition and all medications and ask if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, Stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. 36-hour Cialis or Cialis for daily use. Ask your doctor if Cialis is right for you. For a 30-tablet free trial offer, go to Cialis.com. During the Audubon for All event, you can get a great deal on a Volkswagen. Sounds terrific. Cars built for the Audubon. Actually, we're both pretty conservative drivers. Yeah. So. Oh, shoot the gap! Shoot the gap! So do they all come with carefree maintenance? Yep, scheduled maintenance is included. I like the color. Hey. The Autobahn for All event. Lease the Jetta Limited Edition for $1.99 a month or get 0% APR. She's sweet. <gasps> the kittens! She's sour. John is Thunderbird. Lemon drop. You sport. Absolute Vodka presents... Tell me, Johnny, do you have any kitty cats? Lemon Drop. Give me. Sweet never hurts so good. Lemon Drop. See the film at LemonDropMovie.com. Nobody's sure what Sean White has been up to for X Game 16. You can see it in his eyes. Something huge. X Game 16 starts Thursday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Welcome back to Wrigley. Dan Schulman, Bobby Valentine, Oral Hershiser. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN presented by Taco Bell. The rivalry that is the Cardinals and the Cubs. The Cubs winning the first two games of this series. John Jay back at the plate. He was the batter when Ryan Ludwig was, when now told the scoring is, just out trying to advance. As he was nailed going home. Jay drives the ball a long way to right center field, and it'll drop at the base of the track. And Jay is into third base, standing up. Marlon Bird, Colvin are both there, still sunlight out in that part of the ballpark. But boy, that ball was in the air a long time. In the air a long time, and you see the wind blowing in. The ball is hit very high. If it's blowing out, it's a home run. Marlon Bird thinks he needs every bit of the ballpark. He's going to the wall. Oral, it drops right in the middle of the warning track. First game of this series where the wind has blown in. They've shagged during batting practice. They've gotten used to it. But ball at this height really gets knocked down by the wind. Actually, that ball came backwards towards the infield. Marlon Bird really not even sure if he or Colvin is going to get the ball. But you've got to be a captain as the center fielder and really be aggressive there. I think he wanted it. He just misjudged it. As you said, that the wind brought that ball back towards home plate. So a leadoff triple for Jay. They're in on the corners now for the Cubs. As Skip Schumacher lifts one into shallow center field. It'll drop for a base hit. 
And Jay is in to score as the Cardinals take a one to nothing lead. Schumacher is one of the real uh, interesting left handed inside out hitters in baseball. You pitch him away and you pitch him soft. I don't think he has much of a chance. You hear Dempster tried to come in on him and he got his hands in enough to loop that ball in the left center field. You see as it comes in on him, they wanted to really move it in off the plate. He gets it in and he fights it off and just dunks it in the left center field. Javier Molina, the batter, the St. Louis Cardinals scoring first tonight. And guys, they have the best record in the majors when scoring first in a game this season. They are 38 and 9 when scoring first. And this is the first time in this series they have scored first in a game. You give their big three a lead, Earl. Yep. They're tough to come back on. And Bobby talking about Adam Wainwright and Jaime Garcia and Chris Carpenter, who's on the mound tonight. The Cardinals are. Are just behind San Diego for the best team ERA in the National League, and, and San Diego's got an outstanding pitching staff. And the Cardinals are right there with them. The Padres are at 3.28. The Cardinals are at 3.30. And you talked about the big three: Wainwright, Carpenter, Jaime Garcia, the rookie left-hander. Their collective ERA, those three guys, is 2.44, and they are 34 and 12. Why a lot of people are, are thinking maybe the Cardinals guys are going to go out and get somebody else to bolster the back end of that rotation. There's Garcia, who, like Tyler Cole, then has to be in the mix for National League Rookie of the Year. They thought they had a full rotation starting the year out, but Brad Penny and Kyle Loesch injuries, so they've had to really have a patchwork there in the four and five slot. And Loesch is throwing, but Penny is a distant way off. So they've got Jeff Supon and Blake Hawksworth in the rotation right now as Molina strikes out. Jeff Supon. Jeff Supon off to the right. Well, this is Hall of Fame weekend, which is why John Miller and Joe Morgan are not here. The uh, Hall of Fame induction class of 2010, Andre Dawson going in as an expo. Whitey Herzog, who of course had some great years managing the St. Louis Cardinals. Umpire Doug and my Harvey. Friend John Miller. And our own John Miller with Joe Morgan uh, giving the speech, uh, introducing John Miller. The month by uh, Carpenter will move the runner along. John Miller, congratulations, John, as he is awarded the Ford C. Frick honor this year for major contributions in baseball broadcasting. And he certainly has done that on the, the local side, on the national side, on television, on radio, regular season, postseason. You name it, he's done it. Congratulations to John Miller and also to Bill Madden, a longtime writer for the New York Daily News, who received the Spink Award for major contributions in baseball writing. So uh, John is there, was accepting his award today, and Joe Morgan, of course, is a Hall of Famer, goes back every year on induction weekend. Here's one of the situations where the eighth place hitting pitcher bunted the runner over to get to a 196 hitter who drives the ball up the middle, gets an RBI. <laughs> In to score on the play is Schumacher. And the Cardinals lead two to nothing. Well, hitting your pitcher eighth is not designed for that, but it worked out that way. It's hit, it's designed so that there'll be somebody else on base when Albert Pujols hits in the three hole when the order comes around. Fastball away slightly up basic strike on an 0 pitch but probably too good with a man on second and two outs. You've got two out two batters to get one out with first base open. So the Cardinals with a couple of runs here in the second drawing a throw is Ryan. It has been a while since Brendan Ryan came up with this kind of a base hit. Hit with a man in scoring position. It's been a tough year for him offensively all season long. Under 200 on the season. Let's see if he's on the move at some point as Felipe Lopez steps in. Felipe is a very good offensive player, but he is a liability on defense. And Tony can't wait to get Freeze back, I'm sure, so that he can be playing third base on a regular basis. 
they're going. Throw down. Safe at second on a close play is Ryan. Great jump and great slide. What you need to do, you can't accelerate full speed ever running from first to second, but you need to go as quickly as you can, and your start and your finish is really what makes the difference. This is a very good acceleration. He doesn't slow down when he, when he peeks in. He doesn't even peek in, and then he takes a harder slide into second base to be safe just by a tad. Now, base hit likely brings home another run as Lopez takes outside ball two. And Brendan Ryan has won the battle of 90 feet twice at shortstop. He made a great pickup and got the tag for an out and there makes a great slide and slides the outside part of the bag with what Bobby called the great acceleration. And so he's 108. He's a plus 180 feet. That's pretty good for the second inning. Huh? If you're a hockey fan. You know what that plus <laughs> minus is like. Blocked by Soto. And if you're not a hockey fan this game of baseball is all about time and distance and he had to run that. 82 feet quicker than Soto was able to get the ball down the second base and it was just a split second that he beat it by. So the Cardinals getting a couple of runs really from the bottom of their lineup an RBI single by Schumacher a sacrifice by Carpenter the pitcher hitting in the eighth spot and a clutch RBI single by Ryan. Lopez went around and the count is full. Lopez actually was a late scratch in the lineup yesterday. He made two bad defensive plays, really, which could have been made. Two plays he should have made on Friday. And then he apparently was one of a number of Cardinals who, in part because of the weather, rainstorms, was late getting to the ballpark yesterday, and he was scratched from the starting lineup. We'll take high ball four. More baseball coming your way on ESPN tomorrow night and Wednesday night. First on Monday Night Baseball. Tomorrow at 7. It is Triple Crown contender Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers taking on Evan Longoria and the Rays. And then Wednesday Night Baseball on ESPN. Another look at the Cardinals. They will take on the New York Mets. Both games also available on ESPN3.com. We'll see if home cooking treats the Mets better than this road trip did. They were just out west and lost 9 of 11 games, including a loss to the Dodgers today. Some might say they lost 10 of 11 because one of the games they won was on the play at home when Henry right. Blanco <laughs> didn't tag the runner out, but was called out at the bottom of the ninth. And Atlanta's got a, a pretty good lead right now in that National League East. Ludwig the batter checks the swing and he takes inside of the knees a ball and a strike. For Detroit, a team we'll see tomorrow night on ESPN. Maglio Ordonez breaking his ankle. Inge is already out. Zumaya is already out. Guillen hurt his calf yesterday, and all of a sudden the Tigers are the walking wounded right now as they try to keep pace with the White Sox and the Twins. Check the swing. Two and one. And with the pitcher batting eight, which has Albert Pujols in the three hole. This is a situation where his presence is even felt where it's not a base runner that could be on but just having him in the on deck circle creates different pitch selection at an earlier point. I think Ryan Debster is kicking himself because he gave that fastball to Ryan knowing he has such a great slider that he'd never try to run in on. He threw him right down the middle gave up a run walked the next next hitter because of it I believe yeah. and still struggling on the mound thinking about that one pitch. Should have been out of the inning I think. Well, it should have definitely been a higher quality fastball, better location than just a basic up strike on the outer half. First and second, two down, and a two and two count. Fastball high, full count. Now the runners will be on the move. Now this is what you mean, Earl. His pitch is the slider on three two. He loves to throw it. He loves to get a strikeout with it. With it, but looming in the on deck circle is Sir Albert, who had two home runs off of him the last time he faced him. There go the runners, swing and a miss by Ludwig on the slider, and the inning is over. The Cardinals, though, get two off Dempster and have the lead early here in Chicago. Easy is seeing the results before capturing the image. Easy is getting professional quality images with the Live Guide feature. Pro quality, point and shoot simplicity, HD video, all in one. The Olympus Pen. This is John. He's working on a wheel balancer? Yep. Checking for radial or lateral runout. Yeah. 
I don't know what that means. Then again, I don't have to, because when it comes to your tires, Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealerships have everything you need. Name brands, great value, whatever this thing is. Buy four tires, get a $100 cash rebate, and the low price tire guarantee. That's Ford and Lincoln Mercury service. And this is a TCX 575 tire changer, John told me. She's sweet. <gasps> the kids. She's sour. John is Thunderbird. Lemon drop. You sport. Absolute Vodka presents. Tell me, Johnny, do you have any kitty cats? Lemon drop. Give it. Oh. Sweet never hurt so good. Lemon drop. See the film at lemondropmovie.com. In baseball. Miracles can happen when a team works together. Two out, bottom of the ninth, down to their last strike. The same is true in the fight against cancer. That's why MLB has teamed up with Stand Up to Cancer. Because we believe that when we all stand up together, 41,000 on their feet, we can make cancer history. Now everybody's standing. What a buzz in this building. This is beyond a dream. Stand up with MLB at StandUpToCancer.org. Chris Carpenter with a two to nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the second here at Wrigley. Earlier uh, yesterday, we sat down with Carpenter and asked him about how one pitch can have multiple personalities. You get all kinds of different areas in the strike zone: up, down, in, out, um, soft, hard. You can take a little off. You can put a little on. Um, um, move it here. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that uh, you can do with just one pitch, and, and that's uh, it's all about location and, and velocity. Well, you're an expert on multiple personalities. <laughs> and and multiple pitches off of one signal. The catcher can give you one signal, maybe just a basic fastball away. He can also give you a signal that's a fastball away and then change his different parts of his target, maybe more halves of the plate or corners of the plate or even off the plate. And what you try and do as a pitcher is when you're going to throw that pitch, you think in the back of your mind, not only is it a fastball away, but what type do I want to throw? What type as in two-seamer, four-seamer, cutter, that, is that what you mean? That, and then in your mind's eye, what is my general range of where I want this ball? Am I going for halves of the plate because I want a basic strike? Am I going for the corner because I'm ahead in the count? Or am I so far ahead in the count and it's such a big hitter that I want to go throw it almost a ball and make the hitter get himself out? Two and two, the count on Aramis Ramirez. Is this a thought process all pitchers have, or do you have to kind of mature into this thought process? I've only been in a few other pitchers' minds that you have <laughs> deep enough conversations like this. I could tell you Tom Glavin, Greg Maddox, John Smoltz, uh, not because they were all Braves, but they were all very intelligent pitchers. Chris Carpenter, Roy Halladay, guys that have command, are tacticians, that really understand that that pitch is more important than just throwing it. Lined in the center, a base hit. Well, the basic fastball away for a strike in an 0-0 count for Chris Carpenter is one where he's aiming for a half of the plate. This one is mostly in the middle, but it's on the outer half, and it's a basic 0-0 pitch. But once you're ahead, you aim more for the corner in your mind's eye, and he executes it perfectly out there. Perfectly out there. Then. Ryan Howard 0 and 2 count keep it down and keep it away he does make the hitter get make an out on your pitch he wants to swing at it he can three fastballs away but three totally different fastballs away how old would you say you were when you started to grasp some of the things you were just talking about probably only had two levels of thinking when I was in AAA and early big leaguer but then learned the third level of thinking when I was up here maybe a year and a half two years into my career. Marlon Bird ground ball to third the second one on the first not in time. That seems like just a great hustle play by Bird, and it was. He was right out of the box going as hard as he can. But that's the feed by, by Lopez here at third base. He's got to get that a little quicker over there and make that play. He didn't do it, but Bird was going, as he does every minute he's on the field. He goes as hard as he can, as often as he can. Bird at first, one out on the fielder's choice. The batter now, Alfonso Soriano. 
somewhat quietly is putting together a pretty nice season. He's still streaky, still strikes out a lot, but he's got 18 homers, 53 RBIs. The, the days of leading off seem to be permanently in his past, so instead of thinking like a, a run scorer, he's now thinking like a run producer. One and one. He was the only guy during batting practice that was actually turning the wind around consistently and he has such an easy approach in batting practice that the ball still flies off of his bat. He has a very whippy swing. He's very good at keeping the butt end of his whip like his body still rotating around that and then he uses a big long bat to create that bat speed. What a great low ball hitter. Carpenter got in on his hands. Fly ball, shallow left. Holiday makes the catch. Two down, and Bird back to first. He's talking about he's a great low ball hitter, kind of a buggy whip swing, but you can get in on him even slightly up. That's an up stroke strike, and you just look at him. The hands are coming down and in, and he's dropping the head. But look at that back shoulder drop a little bit, slows the bat down, gets in on the label of the bat, and jams him. Kind of miss miss time to swing there a little. Arrow. I think it's like it could have been was down late. Yeah. Just didn't move his hands in enough. The ball kind of moved in a little on him. Otherwise, that might have been one of those souvenirs out there in the left field bleachers. I think he could have made that swing if the ball would have been slightly away from him. Mm -hmm. Like he would have timed it up a little better. Mm -hmm. Here's Giovanni Soto. It was a big slow curveball for a strike. So to another hot Cubs hitter. He's driven in 17 runs in his last 18 games. There you can see the power that he has shown lately. Uh, starting to look more like the guy who won Rookie of the Year two years ago rather than the guy who hardly hit it all last year. And the Cubs as a team have really started to come around. For Soto, the last couple of months. For Aramis Ramirez, this month. For Colvin and Castro, the last couple of weeks, Derek Lee hitting better. And the Cubs have become a potent offensive bunch. Ground ball to short, busy night early for Ryan. The force of the bag at second, and the inning is over. We're at the end of two here at Wrigley with the visiting Cardinals leading two to nothing. Thanks again, Quad Cities. Sexton Ford is your volume Ford dealer, the only area Ford dealer to earn back-to-back -back President's Awards. We're number one in sales and service. Buy the best-selling truck 33 years running, a 2010 F-150 for $18,999. Get a new 2010 Focus for $13,699. Get drastic used car discounts like an 07 Escape $14,995 or an 06 Fusion $89.95. Oh, yeah. Sexton Ford is The Nelson Brothers Schroeder Insurance Agencies, your best choice for professional insurance service, representing Iowa Mutual Insurance. Together, they help you build your own policy for your auto, your home, and your business. Personal service, professional products. Serving Eastern Iowa since 1913. Nelson Brothers Schroeder Insurance Agencies, your Iowa Mutual Insurance Agency in Eastern Iowa. Call 563-323-9233 today. Two simple words. And now it's time to join in. Announcing the Claim Your Mazda Summer Sales Event. Enjoy the high resale value of Mazda 3. Mazda 6, the driver's alternative to camera. Or the seven-passenger Mazda CX-9. All available with 0% APR financing for 60 months, plus no monthly payments until October 2010. So why compromise? Hurry in and claim your Mazda today. Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Taco Bell, is brought to you by One A Day Men's, the official multivitamin of MLB, specially formulated for men, and Mazda, Zoom, Zoom forever. Some great shots, past and present, of Navy Pier, built in 1916 into Chicago's number one tourist attraction, including a Ferris wheel, which is 150 feet high. Any takers? No it's shot. A, <laughs> I, lo I love Ferris You go up there? Wheels. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think up here in this press box is uh, high enough, don't you think, Oral? 
I don't mind heights. Yeah. I just don't like it to the edge of them. <laughs> There's Albert Pujols leading off the third. The Cardinals up two to nothing, trying to salvage the final game of this three-game series. Pujols walked his first time up. But Pujols right now hitting 301. The last time he was under 300 this late in the season was 2002. His second season in the big leagues. It's a big bouncer to third. One down. He's really conscious of that inside pitch. Let's check in with Ryan Burr with a baseball tonight update. Thanks so much, Dan. Let's check in on the Angels and the Rangers. Texas leading the Angels by six games in the AL West. And Josh Hamilton continues his unbelievable tear. Drives in two with a double here. RBI 72 and 73 on the year. Torrey Hunter has gone deep for the Angels. It's two to one. All right, Ryan, thank you. The Angels also making a move today as they picked up Dan Heron from Arizona for Joe Saunders and a couple of prospects. Thoughts? A lot of frowns with that move. Can't figure it out. I think possibly California is going to move Heron again for some offense. I can't figure out why they would do it otherwise. And Dan Heron, of course, is one of the big names that's been talked about. Cliff Lee's already been traded. Roy Oswald is still out there. The Cubs' Ted Lilly, his name has come up. The Tigers with all kinds of injuries, including the broken ankle for Maglio Ordonez that could keep him out two months. And Ubaldo Jimenez hit hard yesterday. And his control is really off. He needs a mechanical tune-up, doesn't he, Earl? He definitely does. Three and one on Matt Holiday. He's on his back leg a lot, front side spinning out. The sinker is up, and he doesn't even know which half of the plate it's going to. Bobby Apodak is on it. I'll guarantee you they're looking at video as we speak. Holiday with a high fly ball to left field, but again, maybe just in on his hands a bit. And it stays in the park for Soriano. Now, watching BP today, balls that were hit below the bleacher level were carrying. Balls above the top level of the bleachers, where the roofs are, those were getting knocked back. So that wind that's coming in swirls around in this little horseshoe of a stadium and carries balls out. If you get up above that stuff, it knocks knocks the high flies down. Yep. Here's John Jay. Bobby, I'm curious. You, of course, have spent countless numbers of games down on the field here at Wrigley Field, but. Coming up the elevator, walking around on the concourse, getting the bird's eye view here of this great ballpark. What do you think? I'll tell you, Dan, Whitey Herzog, great friend and, and coach, said that Cooperstown is, is heaven on earth. Well, if that's heaven, this is heaven B. <laughs> because this is the most perfect yeah. situation I could even imagine. What a day. And we're very lucky. We can see, obviously, out beyond center field and the rooftops and out to Lake Michigan. This is just a perfect evening for a ball game. The 2 1 to Jay, who tripled and scored his first time up. This is one place that I may join the protesters if they ever decide to build a new park. <laughs> I'm talking about building a new park. They're putting, the, the Ricketts family is putting $100 million in the renovations here in this stadium to make it more fan friendly. And there's the same ball. He hit it twice. And this time Bird with a basket catch just on the edge of the track. Otherwise, Jay might have had another triple. The inning is over. Two to nothing, Cardinals.
configured dozens of different ways to handle whatever life throws at it. No matter which life you're living today. The award-winning Nissan Rogue, now with up to $2,500 total customer savings. Scott Pilgrim prepared to feel the wrath of the League of Evil Axes. What? You don't know about the League coming to kill you, controlling the future of Ramona's love life? No. Oh, hey, don't worry about it. Really? Yeah, it's great. Boom! Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Rated PG-13. I want to take them apart. Take care of your engine, and it'll go far. One way I can take care of my engine, one-a-day men's. A complete multivitamin for my overall health. Plus, now it supports my heart health and helps maintain healthy blood pressure. Whoa. Kind of makes your heart race, huh? Welcome back to Wrigley, where the Cubs are trailing early, two to nothing. They've won the first two games of this series, trying to pick up another game on the Cardinals and trying to make things a little bit more interesting for their fans heading into the last couple of months. 